Hello guys, uh, we are looking at a Stromberg Carlson 6 button 1A2 key telephone, a rotary version. Uh, but that's not the reason why I really bought this telephone. The, re the real reason I bought this telephone it's because it's orange. I don't know how well it's picking up on camera. It may look red, but it's actually orange. Home Depot orange. Construction orange. <laughs> you know, street cone orange. And I love it. It's so hideous. I love it. I, I could not, when I saw this, I could not pass it up. i show you a, a side profile of it in the back of it here. I mean, I just, it's so damn hideous, I love it. Pumpkin orange, I guess, as well. Um, usually, Stromberg Carlson made pretty good, decent telephones. I always kind of thought they were just made a little bit better and a step above Western Electric stuff. Um, I don't know if Stromberg Carlson made any switching equipment um, or um, 1A2 key equipment or if it was just telephones only um, but this is for 1A2 key system 1A2 and I do ha have it hooked up so I can show you um, it's working um, I don't particularly care for rotary dial Good news is I did find out that it does work on my 1A2 as well as my um, Nortel phone system because I have it hooked. My 1A2 is also hooked up to the um, Nortel system, BCM50, and then my voice over IP lines. It does the 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 rotary pulsing does work on that as well. I was really surprised. Um, didn't know if Rotary would have worked on my BCM50 or not because it is a computer-based um, phone system and it's newer. I knew that the older Nortel analog lines did work with pulse dialing, but not the BCM. But it does, so I'm happy about that. Um, this phone did not come with a ringer nor a buzzer, uh, which no big deal. I can add a buzzer, and this is what the buzzer looks like one of the top that they they manufactured you just you know hook it up in the phone and there you go real simple I might do a video about that on on adding the buzzer to the telephone um, because when you did when I do dial the intercom the whole lot lights up so that kind of indicated to me this phone was in in an environment or in a special room, or wherever the case may be, where they did not want any kind of noise, and because the whole button lights up, only for intercom buzzing, not for ringing. Um, so I hear it. Oh, let me show you the back of the phone here. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but it says February of 1978. Model 1800 5B S1 or 51. And I thought that sticker was kind of strange. UTS Sensual Repair Facility tested 10 1879. So not too long, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, a year and a half, some you know, around there somewhere. <laughs> and also, put this back on the mat here. Which, 1979 or 78, was kind of late in the rotary dial game. Usually by then you had touch tone dialing, so the had touch tone pads on the telephones. So I don't know if this was in an area where the central office didn't offer touch tone, or the company that they sold this telephone or installed it for 
just didn't have didn't want to pay for touch tone dialing. I, I don't know what the case is because I don't know the history of the telephone. Uh, but Rotary by 1978 was kind of almost out by then. Of course, you, you know, residential, you did have, some people still had Rotary dials still back then. Uh, this phone would have been installed on non-Bell system lines, meaning this would have been installed for a independent phone company not a AT&T phone company that was owned by AT&T Ma Bell. Um, now later on after 1984, after AT&T was broken up, yeah, you could install these or any kind of equipment on, on, on the AT&T lines, but before then, no. Unless, I'm kind of thinking maybe specialized bi special business that had special permission, but extremely rare you still have to have AT&T equipment on AT&T lines so most likely this was for a independent bell company uh, this is line one two three four then intercom um, on the key system uh, but since my key system is also hooked up to um, the Nortel PBX system which is the BCM50 the last two is really intercom. This is the external Nortel intercom, and this is the 1A2 intercom. So when you do that, lift up the headset and dial 5, it lights up. You hear the buzzing from, the, from my call director over there. So if we do that and dial 462, I believe. It will make it all ring. It doesn't have a ringer. The ringer you hear will be on the other phone. Two. Yep. Let's dial line one, which is 231. So yeah, 231. So I'll be adding a buzzer, and this is what the buzzer looks like. Simple device. I don't care for this particular kind of buzzers. Buzzers, they're not as loud as the old uh, or the other kind of Russian electric that manufactured. I'm not really for sure who made this. Does it say Western Electric on here? I, I can't tell. This was a Bell System buzzer or not. Because they did have third parties, you know, third party manufacturers to make buzzer. Basically, all 1A2 key system stuff is compatible. Uh, for instance, you take this dial off and you can put it on the Western Electric telephone. Uh, same thing with the housing and headset. You can take that off and put it on a Western Electric telephone. The lines uh, assembly, you can if it's wired. This one is uh, wired with a Infinol connector at the bottom. Um, so, you know, depends because the newer Western Electric call directors or, or key strips, uh, each button had its own little set of wires instead of an infinite cable or connector. But, like I said, I just cannot pass a sucker up. I mean, I, the, the color is so hideous, I love it. <laughs> if you do have any questions or comments, please post them below. Talk to you later.